This is a T1. Like, that's a small little fluid collection. This is probably a T1. This is probably a, a, a small fluid collection. Yeah. Probably a T1. This is probably a, mm -hmm. a T2. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that's like a little small fluid collection um, right there. Yeah. And those may, if they're not micrometallic artifacts, they may be little locules of gas. And then so we're thinking, so now we see that collection right there. And it looks like an abscess, soft tissue abscess after arthroplasty. Like an, Do you see anything that would predispose this patient to this condition? Um, I mean, like before the surgery? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, it, look, it, 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 it's a tremendous amount of adipose tissue for one. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I mean, we almost see it on every it's also in the, it's normal. That, but. <laughs> that, 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 that is one, one of the predisposing factors in this, uh, this surgery. And then you see it's anterior, so it's incisional. Um, so uh, it's it's ca it caused it is caused at surgery, not hematological condition of some kind. So this is a surgical case, yeah. but we don't know when when uh, the surgery was done versus this uh, MRI. Yeah, I don't. Do we? Know. I don't know that, but this, this was an abscess. So this is uh, the surgeon's, well, who knows. Yeah. All right, so we have a teenage male with uh, knee pain. And along the lateral uh, femoral condyle, there's extensive bone marrow edema. And um, it extends throughout the epiphysis and a little bit in the metaphysis as well. Uh, we see it extending posteriorly here in the lateral femoral condyle, posteriorly here as well. Um, okay, so we have a bone scan and it's very bright on this. And it's, is this, it's just sliding up on all, is this three phase or? No, this is just, yeah, it's just very bright on white cell scan and bone scan and um, the absence, I, I mean, in the absence of trauma, this is concerning for, uh, I would say concerning for infection, but. <laughs> well, this is somewhat atypical in that you can see here, this is primarily epiphyseal with some extension into the metaphysis. But on the other hand, this here we, we really have essentially closed fecial plates. So at, at this point, uh, this is more like an adult kind of pattern than a, uh, than a, than a child pattern. And a child pattern, uh, these really start in the, in the metaphyseal region here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but, but this was all staph aureus osteomyelitis, and it's probably hematogenous in origin. But you can see once you get to the point where the, to, to the growth plates are really essentially closed, uh, that epiphysis becomes more like a diaphysis in terms of physiology. Sudden onset, pain and fever for three days, 12 year old male, CRP's increased. Um, I'm not sure if I see too much going on here. Um, so it looks like we have bone scans and then there's, I mean, we just see radio tracer uptake in the, like, chrysial plates, but it's symmetric. Okay. Now we have 814, 739, right now, sorry, right now. Mm -hmm. This is the bone scan, which was on 8305. 8, okay. So obviously you can see it looking like the MR scan. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, so we see marked uh, you know, T2 or fluid signal that's in the tibial uh, metaphysis, which this is looks more like a pediatric pattern of osteomyelitis where it's in the metaphyseal location. So, 
So 721.5, the patient is symptomatic, but the answer is so that's on 721. On uh, then on uh, a couple of weeks later, they got a bone scan and it was basically negative. Uh, and then they got MR scans, which uh, shows uh, edema pattern here in the in the distal metaphysis, and this is acute osteomyelitis, and just shows that. Uh, both the plain film, well, we all know that the plain film is not sensitive until after a couple of weeks, 10 days. Uh, but the bone scan also may, may not pick it up for five, five days to a couple of weeks. And then the uh, MR scan is much more sensitive, as we all know. Okay. Uh, this is a 37-year-old female with left leg pain for two months. It was spontaneous and was aggravated two weeks ago. Um, you can kind of see um, periosteal reactional and thickening um, and some uh, moderate bone marrow edema adjacent to that and slightly more proximal extending upwards. There's also maybe a small focus of uh, this contrast enhancement um, of, the, of the edema and uh, um, yeah, it looks, this is, what's going on? Uh, is that just a, I guess a question like, well, it's, it looks like it's in the cortex, text, right? yeah. Oh, and then uh, so on the radiographs, it's a it's a lucent cortical lesion, and um, and uh, you can see quite a bit of uptake throughout the left femur. Actually, it's kind of speckled in appearance, and then uh, there's a lot of uptake on the uh, FDG, um, and I don't know. <laughs> And uh, th this was osteomyelitis with another uh, cortical abscess. Six-year-old uh, six male presenting. Uh, cortic cortical abscess, uh, um, not infrequently needs to be drained. Um, I'm not sure that you need to uh, go around the femur and excise the tissue. You always have to rely on the individual there at, at the time. So I think here, they because they got the PET scan, they must have been concerned about malignancy. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right, John. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's how um, they went in and did the biopsy. But if you, if you have a lesion in the cortex, that, that, that always pushes you towards surgery. And then, then there's an old saying, I'm not sure I said it here, uh, this, this year, um, but uh, once osteomyelitis, always osteomyelitis. That's a, a old saying from way back many years. Um, so we're seeing uh, increased signal and it might be, I don't know if that's contrast with enhancement uh, involving the uh, medial tibia metaphysis and it looks like it's crossed into the epiphysis as well with surrounding with significant surrounding soft tissue edema um, and it says for six weeks after trauma so I assume this is just kind of like a sub like a smoldering osteomyelitis and then you know there's a lot of yeah chronic osteomyelitis uh, you know uh, if I may uh, but in um, the trauma is frequently associated um, by the patient with with these conditions. It's not unusual at all, and it makes you wonder whether it's real or whether it's uh, not uh, caused by trauma. Um, I, I've been fool, fooled, or, or maybe uh, it was truthful, uh, quite a few times uh, with with uh, adults and. And, and kids um, telling me that they had an injury of some kind, a bump or um, something, and then they started to hurt. Yeah, I think we get trauma all the time. So it's uh, reasonable to assume that if you start having pain, you can think back to a time when you might have had trauma in that region. So I can understand. And, 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 and it's very hard to get a history properly out of these people um, because they, they, they'll swear. 
that, that there was a trauma that caused it. Yeah. And, oh, 27 year old male with increasing pain with three sagittal images of the tibia. We have, um, a, a, you know, a diffusely heterogeneous expansile T2 bright, low T1 and enhancing signal in the proximal tibia metaphysis and diaphysis. I see some bone marrow edema also extending to the epiphysis there. Um, uh, I want to so there. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, what do you think about the cortex anterior? Uh, I think it's, uh, I think the, the cortex looks a little bit thickened, but it, it's not too, it's not too crazy. I, I don't see any breakthrough sunburst pattern or. You don't think there's a, a little bowing yeah. anterior to it? Oh, uh, and, uh, the tibial tuberosity? Yeah, oh, right there. Oh, okay, there, yeah. And what does that tell you? Oh, it's, a, it's an expansile. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's been around a little longer than one would think. Yeah. Makes you wonder where this patient been, but then again, if you look at the name down below, uh, this is from the east. Yeah. <laughs> This is from the Central Valley of California. So, this, this, this uh, I would consider this, I, I, I don't know whether you'll agree with me, John, but this is chronic osteomyelitis. Yeah. So, so we, we can certainly see that there is uh, cortical thickening, cortical bowing, which makes it chronic. Like John said, we have fluid collections here. Now, in the, the tibia, you can get a lot of things in the tibia, and there's some very characteristic uh, lesions here. Uh, and there's kind of a differential that, that you need to know uh, for, the, for that. And that's, you can have osteomyelitis, which is, I think, what this is going to end up being. Uh, but other conditions you can get here, if they're a younger kid, you, uh, what else would you might think about? Ewings. Yeah, you can get Ewings, but Ewings would have a different cusp pattern here. You'd, you'd get more of a... Uh, marked thickening of the anteriorly, you get a large periosteal reaction with Ewing's and you get a kind of a hair on end appearance on the on the flame films. So Ewing's one to think about, but Ewing's is a fairly characteristic of appearance which won't be confused with these typically, but you certainly think about Ewing's. Okay, eosinophilic granuloma is yeah. one in this. Osteomyelitis, like we're seeing here. And then you've got fibrous dysplasia, osteofibrous dysplasia, and adamantinoma. Yeah, right. Those are the ones, and the malignant one is really the adamantinoma. So, and fibrous, fibrous dysplasia wouldn't that be uh, the cortex be uh, thinned out rather than um, thickened? It, it can be either thickened or thinned. Often you'll get both. Well, you you, you get both. I know that, but um, you, you see not, nothing but thickening here. Yeah. Uh, and then here we can see that there's a lot of signal within the cortex in this particular yeah. And uh, this, this was chronic osteomyelitis. Uh, but in a situation like this, you always have to uh, think about the possibility of adamantinoma. Okay. Uh, Three-year-old with right thigh swelling and no history of trauma. Um, well, that's... Very abnormal looking distal femur with kind of marked heterotopic bone formation around the femur. Um, the actual, you know, femoral cortex itself looks, from what I can tell, relatively intact. There's just this kind of surrounding bone like, formation. Um, oh, yeah, so this is a chronic osteomyelitis with a sequestrum. Okay, um, so we have two coronal images, um, I think T1 on the left and uh, uh, T2 or PD on the right, fat set. Um, we can see that there's a low T1 signal at the metaphysis, uh, distal femoral metaphysis, and increased T2 signal there. Um, kind of nonspecific, I'd want to see other planes to see if that might be a fracture. Oh, it was there before. I see. 
and it's been stable for a year, so this could be, you know, it's a little bit worse, but it's bounded by the, the physis, so this could be chronic osteomyelitis as well. Yeah. The patient may have had some other areas as well, and they finally decided the patient had chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis, or CRM. Uh, I, I, I don't hear you very well, John. Okay, I'll speak up. Okay, so 65-year-old male, got quite a bit of history, uh, diabetes, hypertension, CRF, and then amputation, fourth finger, MP, left hand, chronic osteomyelitis. So we're seeing the distal femur. So we do see like a minimally displaced fracture through abnormal bone with, you know, kind of modeled lucencies throughout the entire bone. It looks like a pathologic fracture. And so now we have the MRI. Um, so there's marked heterogeneous signal of the bone. There's surrounding soft tissues. There's synovial enhancement and not really thickening, but you know, there's marked soft tissue swelling as well. So assume this is also osteomyelitis with pathologic fracture. So they went and got a bone scan to make sure that this one or other foci, because they are still concerned about malignant disease. Mm -hmm. And so on the yeah, the bone scan we're just seeing real focal radio tracer uptake. This was tuberculous osteomyelitis. So if you go back, uh, you know, this really looked kind of chronic with relatively sharp margins within, within the bone. Notice all the other osteomyelitis, the edges have been very fuzzy because of the inflammatory change. With TB, you can get more chronic changes, and uh, they're, they're, it's better defined typically on the imaging study, though. On the soft tissues, we see a lot of soft tissue swelling here. And the plain film really showed a lot of a kind of a moth-eaten appearance. So this certainly could be malignancy on the plain films. Uh, but the other thing that can give so something like this is uh, t uh, TB, among other kind of a chronic osteomyelitis pattern. You see the effusion there, but this was tuberculosis. I didn't see any giant cells, but I guess they're not so, not magnified enough. Yeah, I don't think this is magnified enough. All right, this is a 52-year-old male with knee pain. Um, in the proximal tibial um, diaphysis, metadiaphysis, there's the periosteal lifting along the medial side right there, and there's some irregularity of the trabecular bone as well. I don't know if there's a possible fracture here or, or uh, here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, looks like there's um, some edema of uh, the medial and lateral tibial condyles and some thickening. Oh, yeah. Okay, and now we're in the ankle. Okay, and oh, okay, so then of the distal fibula, we see a, a focal uh, heterogeneous fluid collection abscess in the distal fibula. Yep, and honestly, there's some cortical thickening or thinning. That's a lot of different diseases here. Yeah. And this is 23 months later. 23 months later. And uh, we see some, yeah, it's kind of expanded. The periosteal reaction is kind of expand, expanded there. There's also some soft tissue thickening there. And um, the bone scan, it's, it's, it's avid uptake of the, the proximal tibia and of the, uh, the distal femur. And you can see both of the abnormalities here, and there's also some fluid collections. Yep, so this is another chronic osteo. Although it seems multifocal, CRM. This happened to be another TB. The other thing to think about multifocal disease is TB. Fifty-year-old male prisoner, chronic knee pain. Um, so it looks like he's got these kind of large erosive bony changes involving his bilateral femoral condyles and also the bilateral tibial plateaus, increased fluid signal. 
this is prisoner and whenever you see that you're always thinking tv but this also this kind of looks like um there that's what I say, it kind of almost looks like the either ra or even almost like the gat images we we're looking at in previous lecture uh, uh, why do you say ra uh, just because it's kind of multifocal and marginal but i guess there's no articular erosions at all Yeah, it could look like it's certainly in a differential. Yeah. But, but, but these are awfully large erosions in the femur. I guess you, you could certainly have them with RA, but with RA, with the rest of the soft tissues looking so normal, I would think an erosion of this size would be very, well, I don't, I've never seen it, but I've seen a lot of RA. But I was going to guess, again, like multifocal tuberculosis, osteomyelitis. Think about that, but if you notice in the most of the uh, osteomyelitis with RA, you see a lot of involvement of the trabecular bones, a lot of kind of moth eaten appearance uh, with, with those. Uh, this is another chronic infection uh, which uh, we see in the, the desert areas in the Central Valley. Uh, so is it coxie? Coxie mycotuses? As you can see here, which was discussed, and this was coccidiomycosis arthritis. All right, 37 year old male, knee pain, evaluate for lateral meniscal tear. We're not at the meniscus. Let's see here. Um, there's some uh, edema of the, uh, of the muscle belly there. I'm not quite sure which muscle. Uh, this is part of Oh, okay. It just looks like a muscle there, though. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's just posterior to the knee. Um, thesis. Um, okay, so it's kind of in, in, involving the the, the semimembranosis. So this is 827-18. Yeah. Uh, they talk about things like fusion and so forth. Yeah. How could you assist? The patient had progressive symptoms. Okay. And the patient came back now about four months later. And this is what it looked like. Oh, wow. Um, so uh, enlargement of this so-called popliteal cyst with a lot of thickening of the synovium. Um, this almost looks like. There's also an effusion. Yep, and a larger effusion. Um, it's very complex. That's uh, and it's it almost looks like okay. So it's coccyx. Okay. So it's, it's chronic. You know, it, you, know, you could certainly, you know, I would think about maybe it's, it's probably this could be PVNS. We have it in. You can get PVNS in the uh, popliteal cyst. This is a lot of kind of fluid in it. Usually PVNS is more of a mass, low signal intensity mass, but I, I would certainly put that in the differential. And then, uh, but this would be more. Difficult. It's a little more meat, meaty, isn't it, John? Yeah. Yeah. Usually, usually you don't get all these uh, focal fluid collections in PVNS, but but yeah. the synovial disease, so possible. But I would put that in it. It could be some sort of a chronic. I think again, this doesn't look very characteristic of the rheumatoid arthritis as I've seen, but it's in that mm. category of chronic inflammatory disease, and this is another case of coxie. Seven-year-old male, left knee pain, uh, right partial nephrectomy for R RCC. Uh, so we have abnormal uh, marrow signal changes in the posterior femur, posterior tibia, and laterally, with you know markedly abnormal, yeah, and then the superior patella, and then markedly abnormal soft tissues immediately posterior. That might be the like uh, popliteus, um, and so. These are either T2 fluid sensitive sequences, and now that you can see all these kind of lobulated uh, soft tissue fluid collections or kind of heterogeneous fluid collections and marked amount of edema within the tibia and the femoral condyles, and there's even fluid collections, kind of like cystic changes within the bone and erosion. So 
this doesn't really look like an RCC net. Um, so I'd be worried about something other than metastatic disease like infection. Just about the same. So you, here you see a lot of a lot of erosive disease inflammation everywhere. So I'm teaching Candida is not that unusual in California. Okay. Okay, well, is it, John? Uh, I, I think to have this this much inflammatory disease in the knee would be unusual for Canada. Well, dude, that that's true, but I mean, in general. In general, um, not an unusual infection. That's correct. Now, usually, usually we see Canada albicans. I, I I know a professional um, football coach that uh, had candida of his pubis. Yeah, right. Yeah, so certainly certainly skin disease is common. And he certainly um, could afford treatment, um, but and he was diagnosed in um, Cedars. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we stop here and we'll finish off the inflammatory knee stuff tomorrow, okay? And then we'll start the shoulder next week. Okay? Thanks. We'll be done with it tomorrow. Have a good one, everyone. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do, if we have time, we'll do uh, tumors of the knee in the spring. And that's we continue from where we left off before. So... Uh, Let's see, Michael, what do you think of this case? Okay, so we'll move on here. What is abscess? Okay, here you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, the last one I remember, I think we were a can candida. It was a candida infection. And we did all of this. Okay. I I think we're about right. Seventy year old with swelling and pain for ten days roll up tumor. Ten days is probably a little too quick for tumor. Um so there's kind of a large heterogeneous thick walled fluid collection with a lot of internal debris posterior to the distal femur knee joint. On the wrong side for like an infected popliteal cyst. It might be intramuscular. Uh, it's hard to tell. It yeah, just looks like a big abscess. The cysts um, are kind of smooth in appearance, uh, almost invariably. So I don't think that that would look like a cyst. Um, right. Okay, uh, Ash. What do you think of Ash? What do you think of this one? Uh, so this is a 53-year-old male with 12-year-old 12, uh, 12 year history of leg swelling. Um, I think it's incompletely uh, uh, seen. It's kind of out of field of view, but superior anterior. Um, there's a lot of uh, edema uh, of the superficial soft tissues and subcutaneous fat, and um, uh, and we're looking at it. It looks like there's, wow, almost like frond-like projections. Is this fat here? Um, there's quite a bit of edema. Heterogeneous. Uh, Heterogeneous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very. Um, a lot of edema in the subcutaneous fat. A lot of thickening. It's kind of diffuse. 
Um, so this is in the leg. If you go more proximate to the thigh, this is what it looks like. Oh, it looks, just looks like a lot of fat without the edema. Okay. So this is um, the one who actually, I think he lived in Compton. Uh, most of the time when I've seen this, it's been someone from Africa. Any idea? Elephantiasis? Yeah, this is, this is elephantiasis. So uh, it's, it's uh, filariasis. It gets into the lymphatic system. Typically, they come from areas of Africa that have a lot of iron in the soil, red soil particles. And they also have an increased risk of superimposed bacterial infections on top of them. Uh, but this is elef elephantiasis here in the in the U.S. Okay. Michael. So it looks like similar appearance to the one we just saw. So it's this 52-year-old Brazilian female, sole and lower extremity. There's just marked edema and thickening and enlargement of the subcutaneous fat involving the... Uh -huh. When you say edema, um, what do you really mean? Um, well, I guess fluid? when I on this one with elephantiasis, it'd be more kind of like lymphatic obstruction. Yeah, it's more like a lymph um, um, tissue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, uh, Michael, I mean, uh, Ashu. We're looking at we're looking at a sagittal sequences vernicio graft, and it looks like there's a lot of uh, fluid and laxity of the graft itself, and um, looks anti. anti what do you, what do you say I don't know if it's just. Why, why, do, you, why do you say okay. laxity? Um, it just uh, well, I I don't see the normal contour uh, of of the of the ACL graft, uh, I, and I thought there was a horizontal on the second image. I thought it was more horizontal, but I think I'm volume average. I don't think I'm looking at the graphs there actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, distally, it looks like there's a lot of fluid along the distal attachment uh, or distal uh, distal graft site. And approximately, oh yeah, approximately there's a ton of fluid at the origin as well. Yeah, and you don't see the um, margins of the bone tunnel here very well. See that? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so what do you think might be going on here? You might think, you know, you could think, uh, you know, given the amount of loosening, could be like a infected graft. Um, I, the cortical I, margins are pretty. I, I think that's a that's a very good thought. Uh, this happened to be a type of a foreign body reaction that we're seeing back with lactide interference screws, which they don't have anymore, and this was all. Uh, for, for, for foreign body reaction, yeah. um, isn't that right, John? Right. Yep. And 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 one thing that you always have to worry about is infection. Uh, that's the first thing you think about. Right. Once you clear that away, then then you then you go to other things. So it's right uh, to be concerned about infection here. This turned out not to be infectious. This is all just foreign body reaction. Okay. 63 year old male, arthroscopy eight years prior, bumped knee pain, real out anterior medial meniscal tear. Okay. Uh, I mean, so first thing I notice is extensive full thickness cartilage loss, the medial compartment. Uh, medial meniscus, I don't really see. It looks like extreme or extensive degenerative tearing with perimeniscal cysts. And there's a lot of fluid along that, um, the recess. Um, and there's these kind of large loose bodies in the posterior joint. And there's a lot of synovial, I believe synovial kind of thickening, as well as extending along the margins. Showing edema within the femoral condyle. Synovial thickening fluid. I'm certainly concerned about, you know, whether this could be infected with all this fluid or anything, but but this is just osteoarthritis. Uh, osteoarthritis. It's just degenerative disease. It is not a true inflammatory condition. But it sure looks more than a bump, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Right. Exactly. 
it's hard to believe uh, history sometimes. Right, exactly. Right. Ashu, what do you think of this case? So this is a 78-year-old female with acute leukemia, and there's a mass in the right thigh and a left thigh, a le right calf and left thigh, and rule out abscess. So the first image looking long, uh, longitudinally right calf. Um, looks like there is a, looks like there's a well encapsulated heterogeneous connection that has it, it, the borders aren't as uh, as well defined, but I think some of it's within muscle, and uh, it looks very vascular. So I don't know if this is an intramuscular abscess or. And it looks like it. Uh, looks like there's rim enhancement fluid, uh, uh, heterogeneous connection within the within the anterior thigh, and also looks like it's kind of extensive. There's a lot of edema. It's extending down inferiorly involving um, a lot of the posterior muscles and also there's osseous involvement um, and mus multiple mus muscular abscesses so um, this so, so they were concerned about abscess uh, they did uh, they biopsied this and it just turned out to be proliferating myositis and it really wasn't infectious so mm. <laughs> Okay, so there is extensive bilateral kind of tubular uh, soft tissue calcifications just throughout both lower extremities. Uh, it doesn't really look like my first thought was kind of like a dermatomyositis, but it's not like sheet like enough. They're more focal. Um, yeah. So could this be, and here's ultrasound of it, we have the posterior acoustic shadowing of the calcifications, some weird like, like parasitic type infection. Okay. About which, one? which one, no. And something chronic, isn't it? Yeah. Calcifying. So in C2, it looks like we have kind of, you know, calcified Lung nodules and all. oh, would this be a sister sister psychosis? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're. Gonna... This is what it looked like when they removed them. Uh, here's what uh, these little sister psychosis cysts look like uh, when you look at them. Here it is under gram staining, and you can see, and here the you know, they're inside the cysts. You can see these little uh, scolices. So this is sister sarcosis, as you know, caused by tapeworms. The reason why uh, some religious groups don't like to eat pork, and the reason why you should make sure you cook your pork thoroughly before you eat it, sister sarcosis. Still a common finding around the world. And then so you see a multiple elongated foci calcified. They look like large rice grains, typical size here. And here's another case from the U.S. of sister sarcosis, again, similar findings. Okay. Ashu, what do you think of this one? Um, so 45-year-old female, both, I'm guessing, bilateral leg pain for one week. Um, you kind of see these calcifications, but they're more clumped than they were before, and they're kind of posteriorly and along the posterior border and almost like near vessels, I want to say, but um, uh, they're pretty superficial. Um, a lot of shadowing. There's some shadowing, yeah, quite a bit of shadowing. Um, I, is, it, is this the same thing? Is this sister sarcosis? But it looks pretty. And it looks different, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty focal. I don't know if this is another tapeworm infection or something. This is sparganosis. And uh, yeah, they, these tend to be uh, much more confluent uh, calcifications, typically in Asia. And it, it actually, uh, uh, the life cycle here really uh, animals, dogs, cat, and cats, uh, you know, they go through, typically go through then the eggs 
go back in through frogs and rodents and then back into animals and then occasionally humans get caught in the web and then these are really worms Okay. Twenty-two year old female with anterior knee pain. Um, so this is anterior knee pain, but we've got coronal images kind of through the posterior aspect of the knee. Five four eleven. I see. Okay, so on the you know close. Coronal of the patella. I don't know if that edema is real along the medial aspect of the patella, and there's also edema at the tatrant side of the inferior patella ten or proximal patellar tendon. Um, so again, we see some kind of increased signal at that. So this is five four eleven. This is about, uh, four months later. Uh, so now four months later, we're seeing kind of marked heterogeneity of the bone marrow, the femoral and the tibial epiphyses, and the patella. So this kind of involving the and is dark. So it's kind of diffuse involved. Is this um, after arthroscopy? Be weird for is this some sort of like disuse osteopenia or some marrow changes like that after surgery? Post -op RST. Uh, uh, reactive post -op sympathetic tissue syndrome. It's probably a vascular reaction. And you can look, look at the uh, office fat pad, that's uh, scar tissue. Yeah, uh, quite from. I wonder how that patient flexes that knee. Yeah, right. Uh, with a lot of pain. Yep. So uh, those are I see, and again, it's nobody knows quite what the triggers is. It's usually some sort of trauma, often after surgery. Typically, it is one of those rare conditions that just above off kind of a, a glove type uh, distribution. Uh, <clears throat> So it's just regional rather than along anatomic barriers, uh, uh, different compartments. And it's, uh, you have abnormal vascular dilatation in the area of, of entry. I, I, I've done a lot of knees, but I only had one case and it was in a female. Yeah. And um, that's the most common, usually, usually middle-aged ladies. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, they develop this um, chronic pain and uh, the treatment that I chose was um, TLC, lots of it, frequent visits and um, and uh, home therapy, heat and cold and, and pain medication as necessary and inflammatories and, and just, just um, don't push it and certainly not op reoperate. That, that's, uh, it came on a, on a lateral release. Okay. Um, and and um, those lateral releases are not innocuous. All right. Thanks. And they're not, not very helpful either. <laughs> it, it took me a few cases to figure that out. Uh -huh. Okay, Ashley, what do you think of this case? Sorry, nine-year-old uh, male with uh, pain, swelling, and uh, bloody tip, no redness. Um, so it looks like there's complete, uh, near complete, just destruction of that physis and uh, significant edema surrounding the distal metaphysis and epiphysis and the large joint effusion and fluid. Um, and fluid there. Um, it's a heterogeneous fluid. There's some, there might be some, there's no, I don't really see layering, but there's a lot of thickening of the synovium. 
You think you think it might be hereditary? Yeah, it could be uh, hemophilia. Um, yeah, hemophilia usually leads to a uh, loss of articular cartilage and more of a degenerative joint appearance. <laughs> this really looks like a a, a Salter Harris fracture through the growth plate, doesn't it? Yeah, it's only nine years old, so hemophilia wouldn't cause any um, degenerative changes. So, so, so th this looks like it's due to chronic repetitive trauma. So, what kind of a condition could you have someone who has repetitive trauma that would progress to the point where you really have a complete fracture? Well, in adults, you, you know, you think about neuropathy. Um, like charcoal joint, joint, but um, yeah. for a kid, you know, it'd be un unlikely unless they had some primary neurologic condition that would sensitize them to the pain. Oh, spina bifida. Yeah, so th this patient had spina bifida. So John was hitting at a congenital lesion, and uh, so this, this the problem here is really in the spine. Yeah, I I, I had a. A boy lived across the street from me, and I watched him grow up with this this condition. It, it was pretty sad. He's still alive. He's in his 40s or 50s, actually. Yeah. Usually, they don't live that long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, you know, uh, I think this is the end of our lectures on the on the knee.